Hey, it's Joe. Today we're going to be taking a look at how to use variables within Quick Test Professional. So a variable is used to store dynamic data like strings and numbers, and basically the variable is a name assigned to a location in your computer's memory, where the data used by QTP is stored. So think of it as a way to reserve memory in your computer. For example, say we create a variable called my name that QTP uses to store a name value. So the variable called my name is just really a pointer to a location in memory where the value Joe is stored. VBScript doesn't require you to declare in advance the data type of the variable. So, you know, if you were using Java or, or, or C, uh, you'd have to type in, you know, this was a string, that the variable was a string called my name. So at runtime, basically, VBScript it automatically assigns a subtype to the variable. So this variable, my name, which equals the, a string value named Joe, at runtime, VBScript will automatically assign the subtype string to it. So it handles it behind the scenes without you having to tell it in advance what type of variable it's going to be. But it is a good practice, however, to use the dim statement before using a variable. A cool function to be aware of in VBScript is the function called type name. So if we use type name and pointed it to our variable, my name, and when we run this, it's going to show us what subtype VBScript assigned to that variable. So if we run it, Notice how even though we didn't tell it that this is a variable that is a string type, it shows us that it automatically assigned a subtype of string to it. So if for some reason we changed our name to say, you know, the number six, we ran it. Notice that it automatically assigned the subtype integer to it. So this brings us to the concept of operators. So operators using a QTP and the VBScript uh, code are used to change or test a value. So you can use them to perform uh, mathematical operations like addition, multiply, divide, and subtract. So if we create a variable called sum, and we said value 50, we can do addition by using the plus sign 20. So if we run this, it should show us the value of 70. And like I said, you can use other operators, such as the minus sign. And this will show us the value of 30. So at this point, you may be wondering, how can you see the current value of a variable? So far, we've been using the message box function to show the results, but there are two other ways to see a variable type. Because normally, when you're writing an automated script, you're not going to want to have message boxes come up that require uh, manual intervention. So if you were dynamically populating variables at runtime and you want in your test results to see what variables were used for certain tests, uh, you could use either the print statement or the report event method. If we use the print function, it's just print followed by my name. Notice it brings up a quick test professional print log with the value that was used. Now why would you use this? Well, I actually just used this recently in a test where basically I created a script that is populating defects from an old defect system into, into Quality Center. Because there were 7,000 records and I was running this script, occasionally I just would want to look at the computer to see what progress it was on. So basically what I was doing is every time I went through the loop and added a defect, I would increment a number. So when I went and looked on the machine that was running the test, I could see what number it was on. So this brings us to the report event method. So both the message box and the print statements are helpful if you're debugging a script. But if you want to store the variable's value to view and keep as part of your test run's history, uh, for this, you would use the report event method. This will report an event to the run results of your test. You would just type in reporter dot report event. And so this is where you can assign it whether the test failed, passed, warning, or done. Because we're not uh, doing any ver verification to see if this value is correct, we're just going to do done. And so what we're going to do is we're going to type in a custom message. So I'm going to say this, this is my name. And 
and what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do something called concatenation. And basically what that does is it pastes two strings together. So what I want to do is I want to paste, this is my name with the value of the variable that I'm running. So to do that, you use the ampersand sign. You could also use the plus sign, but uh, it's a better practice to use ampersand. So I'll use ampersand my name. And for the details, I'll just give it my name. So now if we looked at the results, we should have a test step. And in that test step, it shows this is my name and it shows the value of the variable during the test run. So this is my name, Joe. Cool. So a lot of times when you're running scripts, bad things can happen, especially when you're receiving input from a user. So if you're using, say, a BPT that has a input parameter that uses a using to feed values at runtime, you, you need a way to verify the, that the data being passed to your variables is what is expected. Uh, so for example, say you have a script and it's performing a calculation and someone passes it as a string rather than a number. An exception is going to occur. So for example, say we created a variable called x, let's see x equals 10. And then we do a variable called y equals. And so we're going to accept input from a user. So we're going to use the input message box and just say enter a number value. And so now we just want to say that the variable sum equals x plus y. All right, so let's run it and let's do a valid value first. So we'll give it the number 10. And notice the sum is 20 because it's adding 10 to 10. Well, that's all good and cool. But say you have for some reason a knucklehead that is trying to do the following. Ooh, error, not cool. So because you never know what a user is going to do, the best way is to validate the data being passed to your input values. So one method of checking what has been passed to your variables is to use the isNumeric function. For example, the following code will check if the variable y contains a number and will return either true or false if it is. Right? So we can use the isNumeric function. I'm going to give it the value of y. All right, so once again, let's enter the value of Joe. So let's run it and see how the function is numeric says that it's false. So when you're running, when you're creating these types of scripts and you're accepting input, uh, you usually would do some sort of verification. So there's a whole bunch of these is functions that you can use. You can check if it's a date, if it's empty, if it's null, if it's an object, if it's an array. And that's it for variables. Mm -hmm.